Good morning, HPC. We come to the next in our um, series of ramblings, and the chapter is titled God is Trinity. God is a tri unity, a family of love involving three persons. Those of you who know me won't be surprised to know that I can't fully understand, fully get my head around the concept of God as Trinity. I can't fully explain how there is one God and that that God is three persons and that each of those persons is fully God. Wilson, in his book, Incomparable, admits that he doesn't fully understand it and he is a far smarter man than I am. I struggle with my children's maths homework. But it doesn't mean that I shouldn't believe it. I know, I know uh, the word Trinity is not found in the Bible, but neither is the word Bible found in the Bible. And it doesn't change the fact that the word Bible is a very useful description for the scriptures any more than it changes the fact that the word Trinity is a very useful description of the threeness and the oneness of the Godhead. The fact that God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit and that those three persons are distinct and yet united in love. At the heart of our faith is this loving family of three and we're invited to join it. Now, the fact that God is a tri-unity, God is Trinity, makes an enormous difference to our faith. But let me just, I guess, highlight one area in which the Trinity makes a staggering difference. And Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, is a good place to start because we see just uh, for a moment there all three persons of the Godhead. We see the Son baptized. We see the Spirit descending on him in the form of a dove. And we hear the Father's voice speaking words of love and approval over the Son whom he loves. And that's a, a helpful place to start because it says at the heart of what Christians believe, there is a loving family of three. Before there was anything else, there was God the Father enjoying God the Son in the love and joy of God the Spirit. And that out of the overflow of their love, they create everything that exists. Everything to be a place of light and life and love. Now, of course, that's not how we experience the world today. Oh, the reason is very simple, that we have turned away from this triune God, this family of, of love. And what happens when you turn away from light and life and love? Well, you get darkness and death and hate. And that explains, I think, so much of our current situation, doesn't it? But because uh, the heart of the Christian faith is a family of, of outpouring love, God pours out his love on people who've turned away from him. And so the Father, the Son and the Spirit agree together that the Son will come and join us in our mess. There's no socially distancing with our God. He comes to be our brother that we might join him in his family. So he takes on himself uh, that death and darkness and hate. And he, um, on the cross, he plunges them down into the hell that they deserve. And then he rises again, having dealt with them once and for all. And he says, come and share in the love and the joy and the light of this family, of the Trinity. And anyone who says yes to him, well, they get his spirit to be our spirit, to, to live inside us. They get his father to be our future his father to be our father and his future to be our future. It's a, it's a 
fabulous offer. It's an astonishing inheritance. It's for free, it's forever, and it all flows from the fact that our God is Trinity. Now, there's lots more that could be said, but I want to suggest to you today, go away and and delight yourself in the truth that we have God the Son as our brother, if we're a Christian, God the Spirit as our spirit, if we're a Christian, and God the Father as our Father, if we're a Christian. It's enough to cause anyone to wonder and marvel. I hope that's what will happen to you today.